Uh, let's move on to the next thing, which is trigger mode. Let me show you guys the trigger mode. Press the trigger mode button here. Okay. Once you press trigger mode, your second or third, your third button down would be normal. Go ahead and press normal. Okay, your trigger button should still be blinking green here. If your trigger level, which is the letter T, indicated by the letter T on the left side of the screen, and there's a little arrow there, you, so some of you may or may not have a trigger there. We'll set a trigger. There's the letter T, and my trigger light's blinking. For those that do not have it, press the simple enhanced button, which is right here at my fingertip. Okay. And this is very important. Soft menu button number two tells me the channel of your trigger. That must be the waveform that you're putting in. So most of us are on channel one. Please set your source to the same channel number that you have your, your waveform sourced into. So if you're going into channel three, set this for channel three. And then adjust a level here until your trigger level light begins to blink again. That's a normal trigger. And you can watch the little arrow over here go up and down when you adjust the source. So in this case, I'm adjusting level, and my, my trigger level is moving up and down. Make sure that level is about one-half volt. Okay, so we talked about the trigger mode here. Um, if everyone will press uh, the uh, trigger mode button here, and make sure you select this trigger mode here, auto. And if you press the start stop button for start status, you'll have a waveform no matter what. This is the safest trigger mode to start in. If you do not know the size of your waveform, there's uncertainty as to whether there's even a waveform on your test point at all. Any uncertainty at all, just select auto. Okay. Auto level is a little bit friendlier. You can press this button. It always starts on channel one. <coughs> That's the default. We assume that you're going to be using channel one before you use channel two or three. So it's a very friendly start if you use channel one. We're more likely to find your waveform. And we'll set a level for you. Over here on my screen where I'm drawing a little a little red arrow now on the left side there, there's the letter T. If you look at your DL850, you should have the letter T there. Some of you will not. Your other your 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 waveform may be on another channel uh, than your trigger mode or your trigger level. So anyway, these are the these are the easiest two trigger modes to use, and I and I recommend starting with these two. When you get better with uh, normal trigger mode, you can use you can come in here and choose normal. If you use normal trigger mode, you must successfully set the source and the level. Again, the level is the little letter T over here. These are more advanced ways to control your oscilloscope or your recorder. And then the method here called on start. This basically is no trigger at all. This basically would acquire one long waveform and then and then just simply stop at the end of one acquisition. So on start can actually be a simple triggerless way to record. And there are many times when you will want to use on start. It simply records one time. Same thing as single in. It's a very friendly way to record n equals one. And that records one time. You could say n equals 10, and it'll make 10 acquisitions. So uh, single, go back to single. This can be the, a real friendly way, too. No triggers, no messing around. Just tell it to record one time when I hit the button. OK. In this case, uh, if you'll press the simple enhanced button here, You'll see this soft menu here. And default, your instrument will say simple edge triggering. Uh, we really won't talk in depth about advanced triggers today, but I have a dedicated PowerPoint with about 30 slides in it that will show you one example of every type of enhanced 
or advanced type of trigger mode that there is. Uh, anyway, simple simply means, uh, in this case, it defaults to channel one. We're going to look for a rising edge, and when that rising edge hits 500 millivolts, we're going to trigger and begin the acquisition and fill the acquisition memory with one record length of data points. It's that simple. In this case, we've got a one kilohertz train, and uh, we recorded it for one millisecond per division, which is 10 milliseconds. So we got about 10 cycles there. Uh, hysteresis, this soft menu item here, you would set that for wide in the event of noise. This would prevent false triggers. This very often is not a critical setting. The hold off simply tells the DL850 to ignore triggers for the period of time that you enter here. So if you put in one second here, it would ignore uh, triggers for one second after each trigger. Okay, these are the enhanced triggers and uh, we get there by pressing simple enhanced then in selecting enhanced and uh, again I've got a PowerPoint that will show you one example of each and I can assure you these uh, triggers require uh, some some very logical thought process to to comprehend or to explain and and, and, and also to come to understand them very well. Personally, I find it uh, easy to sit down with a function generator and maybe connect a couple of channels in here and then just kind of study uh, 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 how this, this trigger behaves. Um, the most popular trigger in here may be the OR trigger right here. Okay, so if you need an advanced trigger, keep in mind the OR trigger. And that's also a window trigger. So by window trigger, I mean uh, I could set a, a level of 1 volt and 2 volts, and whenever my waveform goes between 1 volt and 2 volts, then I, tre I create a trigger condition. So here's the OR window trigger. This is actually a very easy exercise. It's simply two triggers. And I would encourage you to start out by using channel one and channel two, just to keep things simple. But once you're in here, you're gonna to have to set channel one and channel two, or any of the two channels. What this says is when my waveform is in between uh, a level of, of 1000 millivolts with a width of 200 millivolts. So that means my trigger goes from uh, 0.9 my window is 0.9 to uh, 1.1 volt, and so that's our that's our terminology in there. I've set it nominally for one volt, but then I go 100 millivolts below one volt and 100 millivolts above one volt, and uh, that's the window. That's the window trigger. And again, I can OR channel one with channel two. So I can say trigger on channel 1, R2, R3, and each has its own set of conditions. Okay, for a, uh, a manufacturer of UPS or generator power, if you have the output of a generator, the wave window trigger, what it does is it looks at each acquisition and it sees a sine wave there. It grabs about four cycles of it, and it calls this the golden golden waveform. I hope you guys understand what I mean by golden waveform. This is the one that we believe to be perfect. And uh, then the DL850 looks for the next uh, waveform, which may be, uh, it may be slightly different. My next waveform may have a little spike on it, like that, and otherwise it's good. Well, the wave window trigger is very good at finding spikes. And you may have a spike here, or you may just have a sag here, or a surge. This is a very powerful trigger. It works on sine waves only. It only works on sine waves. And uh, I've written a frequently asked 
questions document for this wave window trigger. If you have any interest in it at all, uh, call me or email me. I want to send you that, uh, that the documents that I've put together with some examples so that you can experiment with that trigger before you, you try to use it for a live, a live recording run. Okay, at this time, uh, press on your oscilloscope, press the uh, simple enhanced button, which is right above the zoom functions. Press, press simple enhanced, and I want you to press soft menu button number two, which is source, and just see time there. Go ahead and select time with the up down arrow and the set button. So I press Simple Enhanced, Soft Menu Button Number 2, and I selected Time. And now I can tell it to trigger once an hour, once every 10 seconds, or once every 24 hours. So this is a way just to create snapshots of data. It could be temperature, it could be pressure, it could be um, voltage. And uh, it's simply related to the clock and it will run until it fills the hard drive or fills your USB drive. So that's a timer trigger, and we consider uh, the timer uh, as a trigger source. So you can think of it as a, as a real-time clock, and in this case you're telling uh, the DL850 to, to record one acquisition every 10 seconds or every one hour, however you want, whatever you want to choose in there. Action on trigger is actually one of the most important aspects or features of the DL850. So thus far, we have uh, recorded um, some some very short acquisitions, and we did one save. We we manually saved a binary file to a USB thumb drive. Well, you could do that automatically. So every time I get a trigger the DL850 can save an image. It can save that binary file like we did earlier. It can print to the printer. It can send me an email. And it can set off the buzzer. Let me show you where this menu is at. Press the Shift key and then the Trigger Mode button. And you'll, you may have to hit Stop but there's the uh, there's the action set up, and you have to be very smart about it here. You have to tell it which which media to save to. You have to tell it what you what you would like for it to do too. You may just want it to beep. That may be sufficient, but most customers want it to save the waveform simultaneously. You can save the waveform and save the image. Okay, so here's an exercise uh, for action on trigger. This is actually one of the more important features. Um, so anyway, I've got one slide here in about, uh, what, about six or seven steps here. You should be able to do uh, do exercise one first, and then come in here and do this these steps, and you should be able to do your first action on trigger.